Hello all, welcome back. So in this session, we will continue our discussion about the wedlock coding of RISC-V processor. So in previous session, we have seen the wedlock code for the top module as well as instruction memory unit and instruction fetch unit, right? So let us once briefly see what we have discussed. So we have seen the R-type instruction. So we are uh, focusing on R-type instructions for now. So afterwards, we will uh, move forward with uh, another type of instructions. So R type instruction, first I have written in hexadecimal format, uh, the binary code I have converted into hexadecimal format. And uh, after reset, the instruction will be stored in the instruction memory. And uh, using the instruction fetch unit, uh, with the help of PC program counter, I am fetching that instruction out of that uh, instruction fetch, uh, sorry, instruction memory unit, right? So from that instruction memory unit, I'm uh, getting that particular instruction in uh, into my top module, right? So here I will show. So in this instruction memory unit, so this is top module, uh, wedlock code for top module. So in this top module, you can see here, the instruction is uh, getting uh, out of this instruction memory unit. I'm collecting it in my top module. And this instruction, I'm giving it to my control unit. Uh, so instruction out 31 down to 25. 14 down to 12, 6 down to 0. What are this also I have told in my previous session. So these are uh, basically function 7, function 3 and opcode. So this uh, I am giving to my control unit, right? So this I am giving to my control unit. So in this session, we will see uh, about control unit, okay? So we'll discuss about what is this control unit and what are we going to do, okay? So in this control unit, So this is my control unit, right? Yeah. So the input, I uh, will show this. So I have a reset signal as one of my input, reset. And uh, function seven, function three, opcode as my inputs. Function seven, function three, and opcode. Okay, while instantiating only, I am dividing, I am dividing uh, my instruction and giving this particular fields, function 7, function 3 and opcode. And my output of this uh, control unit are ALU control. So one of this output is ALU control, which is of 6-bit uh, and LB mem to reg, LB means load byte, mem to reg. We'll show what is this mem to reg everything. Uh, mem to reg BN EQ control, BN EQ control, BN E control, BN E control, everything like this. I uh, have signals. So when this uh, particular branches, uh, when this particular instructions come, I will explain what are this instruction, uh, what are these signals. So for now, uh, these are my inputs and outputs. Okay. And when reset, my ALU control is equal to zero. Okay, this ALU control is uh, somewhat important. Okay, so once see this, this is ALU control signal. This signal again, it will we will collect in the top uh, while instantiating. Here you can see in the top module, this is the top module. So here we have instantiated our control unit. So here you can see ALU control. We are collecting this here in the top module and we will give it into the data part okay so in the data part i uh, data part uh, i hope you remember so data part consists of uh, alu as well as uh, register file unit yeah so this this is data part unit so this data part consists of alu as well as register file unit and data memory so the signal which is coming from our control unit that is alu control will be given to this data part with the help of this top module. And from this data data part uh, uh, unit, uh, we will give it to the ALU. And uh, yeah, while we will discuss this ALU, we will see what is this ALU control, okay? So this is the given to ALU unit. Now, logic for analyzing the type of instruction. So coming to the uh, this logic, so we'll uh, include function seven, function three, and opcode in our always block and begin. So if it is R type instruction, then opcode is uh, 011, 
double zero double one so if the op code is uh, zero double one double zero double one then it will come into this r type category so in this first we will initially make mem to rec signal is equal to zero b q zero b n q b g e q b l t jump l u i all this equal to zero and if it, function three is triple zero then it is a addition operation right sorry uh, if function three is equal to zero and function seven is equal to zero then it is an addition operation so this will come under addition operation so if function three is equal to zero 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 and function seven is equal to sixty four then is then it is a subtraction operation so depending upon the function three and uh, function seven type of operation in the r type is decided so now we will discuss only addition operation for now okay so if, if function three is equal to all zeros and function seven is equal to zero then alu control is equal to all zeros followed by one okay this alu control is equal to all zeros followed by and if function three is equal to uh, all zeros and uh, function seven is equal to sixty four, ALU control is equal to all zeros followed by one zero, like this. If it uh, if the function three is double zero one and function seven is zero, then it is a shift left logical. Okay. So for that, I have written the ALU control. And if it is function three is zero uh, one zero and uh, Function seven is uh, zero. Then ALU control is this, and function three is uh, zero double one. And function seven is zero. Then ALU control is this, and function three, function seven combination is this particular combination. Then it is an XOR operation. Similarly, for all the different combinations, we have different operations: shift, right, logical, OR operation, A, AND operation. So for different types of operations, you can see the uh, ALU control value is uh, difference. Okay. So for addition operation, ALU control value is one. And uh, wait a minute, I will show that. So for addition operation, depending upon the function three and function seven value, I am deciding whether it is an addition operation or subtraction operation. And depending on that, you can observe here, I am uh, deciding my ALU control value. Okay, ALU control in this case is ALU control. Is equal to sixty binary, one two three, one two one. Okay, this is ALU control. And if it is a subtraction operation, how I am deciding the subtraction operation? Whether it is a subtraction operation, it will be decided upon, uh, based upon function seven and function three, right? So if it is a uh, subtraction operation, then ALU control is sixty binary, one two three four five. Sorry, zero zero. Zero one zero, like this. So depending upon the type of operation, I am giving my ALU control signal. Now, so this ALU control signal will again be collected in my top module. Okay. So here, uh, I will collect my ALU control signal and I will give it to the data part. So this data part consists of ALU module and RFU unit. That is register file unit. I will show the ALU unit. Wait a minute. Yeah, this is ALU unit and data path unit also will open. So first, we will get that ALU control uh, signal into this module uh, ALU control. Yeah, this is the signal we are getting from top module. I will show that. So this is top module, right? So in this top module, I'm uh, getting that signal from control unit and collecting it in the top module and giving it to the data part unit while instantiating it. Okay, here you can observe. So let's see in the data part unit. So in this data path unit, I'm collecting it. Uh, it is my input. So I'm collecting it, and again I'm passing it to my ALU. Okay, here you can observe I'm passing it to my ALU. For now, uh, neglect this uh, all uh, remaining signals. So for now, see I'm passing just uh, this ALU control signal. Okay. So in this ALU, you can observe. So ALU module has uh, this different type of inputs. Okay. 
so we will now start the discussion of this alu unit so i hope uh, uh, how i am passing this alu control unit from control unit to top module top module to data path unit and data path unit to alu okay so if possible i will draw it here so this is my control unit and from this control unit i am passing my alu control this is my top and it consists of data path unit so this alu control will be given to this data path unit and this dpu will take the alu control and pass it to the alu module okay so this it will pass so like this the alu control will pass from cu to alu okay let's see uh, what are all the inputs and outputs of this alu unit So this ALU has the inputs called source one. This is of 32 bit, and another is source two, which is also of 32 bits, and another is called ALU control. We are aware from where this particular signal ALU control is coming from, right? Yeah. And another is called immediate value R. Immediate value R. For now, don't worry about this particular signals. And uh, we have. Shift amount SHAMT and output as result. And output as result. Okay. So these are the particular signals associated with this ALU, ALU module. Okay. So within an always block, based upon this ALU control, you are deciding whether it is an addition operation. We have seen right in the control unit. If it is an addition operation, how we are deciding that? is an addition operation we are deciding based upon function 7 and function 3 values right so if a particular value of function 7 and function 3 we are getting so we are deciding it is an addition operation and we are fixing that alu control value so if that alu control value we are fixing so if it is all zeros followed by one uh, we are coming to know that it is an addition operation so what we should do in the alu unit we should perform addition right so result is equal to source 1 plus source 2. Next, if it is a subtraction operation, then result is equal to source 1 minus source 2. Based upon this ALU control value, we are performing the type of operation, whether it may be left shift, right shift, uh, all that we are performing. Okay. So this is shift right logical and this is shift right arithmetic or operation and and operation. Yeah, so these are all R type uh, operations associated. So up to here, we are performing R type, uh, R type okay. And from here, immediate type operations will uh, start. So for now, we will concentrate on R type instructions, right? So, so this is how this is the data flow or the control flow, uh, how we are performing the operations, right? So that's all for this session. So in next session. We will see this about this source 1 signal, source 2 and uh, yeah, we will see about this source 1 and source 2 because uh, we are only discussing about R type for now. So we will, uh, for this R type, source 1 and source 2, we should know from where we are getting this particular signals and how we are getting this particular signals, right? So yeah, so that's all for th this session. So thank you.